Hello folks and welcome. So Pop OS is what I have a video on for you today. I'm going to talk about some uh, desktop functions. In other words, uh, some things you may not be aware of that you can change. How to perform things on your keyboard and how it interacts with your desktop. So I will say welcome folks. Um, you can see the system information here. And uh, more importantly, um, I will uh, basically quickly make mention that my all my videos have timelines or chapters on them and that way you can hit stop and back the video up to whatever chapter or timeline also my library is over a hundred videos so I do uh, encourage that you go take a look at my video library and look in the about section for some tips on how to do quick searches other than that folks welcome so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the settings you can find your settings here or at the top there doesn't matter how you get here. Um, so while that's open, I might as well just make mention of what I'm filming in today, 3840 by 2160 and a scaling of 200%. So I'm going to talk about desktop. Super key action is the first item. What is the super key? Well, some of you folks may not know what that key is. Um, so in between your control and your alt key, you will find a key on some keyboards. They say start on them. They may even have what it looks to be like a Microsoft symbol. I'm going to depress mine and it does that searching for applications because that's the current function of that button. If I switch this over to that, it will open up my applications menu. Okay. Workspaces. Okay. So that function, that button does multifunction stuff. So it's wherever you want it. I believe the default is launcher. Okay, so if you wanted to do applications, you can do that rather easily. I'm really not going to get into hot corners, but you could enable hot corners for your, um, your desktop thing. So it performs that function, for instance. And uh, I will close that back. So I'm going to turn that back off. Now, also, there's a way you can configure this bar up here. So that's the top bar. Okay, show workspace button, that one right here. Okay, you don't want that? Turn it off. Show application button. You don't want that? Turn it off. The other thing about the time and date and your calendar thing, a lot of people go, well, is there a way I can move it to the right or the left? Sure, right here. It's currently set for center and that's default. Here's your left side. Now you got your, your stuff over here and here's your right side. Now you got it right here in the corner. This is default. All right, show minimize button. Well, there's the buttons. There it is with it off. There's with that button off. A lot of people are going, where is that setting? Well, it's right here under desktop, desktop options. I don't think most people like to turn those off, but there are some folks that don't like those things. What am I doing here? I'm showing you a hidden little trick. So think about the top bar as an imaginary line, providing you didn't, you did not change any or your mouse behaviors anywhere else on the system. If you double click on this imaginary line, you have to be uh, inside the box, not on top of it. In other words, if you're outside, this does not work. But if you double click on your mouse, I'm using a standard computer mouse, a standard USB computer mouse to do that. All right, the backgrounds are pretty self-explanatory. And the current background that I'm using, I actually just found in my, my file manager under uh, pictures. And you know, when you open these things up, uh, you, hopefully you've seen my videos on the file manager that you can resize stuff on the fly. But you can make any of these things wallpaper just by right clicking on them. All right, so I think that's fairly self-explanatory to most folks. But I thought I'd make mention of it anyways. Or you can just pick the ones from the standard system stuff. You know, I think this, this one and this one I think are default wallpapers. Your shortcut to your appearance section is in here. If you like the light versus the dark thing, the light, light side of the dark side. So your dock, there's the dock down here. Now you don't have it. Now you do. 
extend it to the edges or not. You've got it now floating. There's a lot of options in here, folks. A lot of options. So basically, I'm going to leave that setting off and then uh, always visible or we're going to do intelligent hide or always hide. What is the difference? If you have a web browser open, let me minimize this and bring up Firefox. Doesn't matter what web page it is. As soon as it loads, I'm going to first go through this. I just did an update. Sorry, folks. I hadn't opened this since the updating. All right. Now it's... Uh, done its annoying thing. So I could use the, the full or just double click on the bar here and make it full. Now you have no dock. And then as I move my mouse pointer downstairs, you got the dock that kind of populates. You got to be in that center because I, I had the edges chopped off. And as I minimize this thing, the dock returns. That's the setting I was referring to. All right, so let's go back into here. So that's intelligently hide. Always hide is self-explanatory. Always visible should be self-explanatory. Then you have some controls of the uh, size of the dock itself. Maybe you're wanting a small one. This all is subjected to your uh, screen resolution, of course. Now you have it on the side or the other side or the bottom of the screen. So there's a lot of things that you can do just by desktop settings that a lot of people don't explore. Anyways, folks, uh, I'm not going to discuss every single option in here. I think I gave you pretty much the highlights that you can experiment on your own, but at least I try to explain some of the functions, especially when somebody doesn't know what that key is called, for instance. On that note, I will say thank you for watching.